It's a fascinating thing. I decided to run because I've always been a volunteer. Since I'm a little kid, I've always been a volunteer. And doing things in the community is what my passion is. Um, so when the opportunity arose for me to run for this position, it was the right thing to do. Um, even though I, I thought about it for quite a long time, and then I decided it is the right thing to do. Um, I know I, I will do well in this position and continuing to do the things that the community needs. Um, and so that's, that's basically why I decided to run. Um, getting to this point, you know, most people assumed right away that, oh, you know, you're running for the position, you already have the position, but I never th took that point of view. It was that you still had to work for it. You should not take anything for granted. You should not take the people for granted. So um, I just intend to do, to do my best in, for the community and um, moving forward. The election process, <laughs> yeah. Um, there, was, there was no primary, but there was in the general election and we campaigned just as hard as any, as, you know, if they were a primary, we never stopped campaigning. We know meeting all the constituents, you were going to every senior center, you, you know, you speak with the people in the schools, you speak with everyone possible, and you just tell them the vision you have. You know, I, I spoke with them. You know, I'm, I'm the president of the precinct council, and you know, I'm on the community board and those things. So I had the opportunity to speak with people, and people knew what I did and what I was about. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, f to that end, it was it was an easier um, run for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, once you know, people said, "Oh, it's about time you're doing it." I'm like, "Oh, thank you." You know, and it worked out. It worked out to the best, and that's you know, just I'm just going to continue to keep working. I think it's because of my community involvement and also they know that I'm a person who's willing to work. I'm not the, the person who just wants to stand and says, well, guess what, I'm the chair of this, I'm the chair of that. That's not what it's about. It's um, doing things. My parents always taught us that if you're going to assign someone to do something, you must also be able to do that same function. If you cannot do the function that you're asking someone else to do, then you shouldn't be doing it. So I'm always working. I have to work. Inactivity kills me, so that's that's the reason. Mm -hmm. So people understood that she's a worker. That's it. Let's see. Okay, back it comes back again to community service, and I remember in like nineteen in the eighties we were renting a house, and um, I was a teenager, and we were. People assumed it was our house because everything that happened on the block, everything that happened there, I was the one writing the letters. I think I used to write to the borough president every month. You know, we lived in Queens and then we moved to Brooklyn. And I would write to the borough president, hey, there's a lot of vacant lot that needs cleaning up. Hey, there's this something, the street needs this. And then it, it just evolved from that. And at the office, I had a colleague who used to say, oh my God, she's the Norma Ray of the office because I always wanted to help the other people and I wanted to make sure that, you know, I would research information and give it to somebody and say, hey, this is what you tell your supervisor, you know, so it just became something that I always did and, you know, just evolved from there. I became the leader on the block, you know, you going to the community board, going to the precinct council, I'm a lion and we serve, that's all it's about, it's service, so it's ingrained in us. So it's always working, 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 and that's, I think that was just the next step. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought, you know, somewhere on the line, a position would open up and I'll run for it. You know, years ago, friends would say, so when are you gonna run for office? And the answer used to be, oh, when I'm 30. <laughs> and I'm closer to 30, and then I'm like, okay, it's time to run, then, you know. When are you gonna run? I'm like, yeah, close to 40, okay. So that's what, and then the position opened. I came, it came at the right time. Um, it's bittersweet that I have to leave my job, my current job, because I, I like what I do there, and I think I made a difference there, mm -hmm. and moving on, but I think I'll make a greater impact for my community going to the Registrar at St. Francis College, the small college of big dreams in Brooklyn Heights, New York, yeah. Getting things done, moving the, moving services, getting things, of making services available to the students, making services available to faculty, just the interaction with faculty, the interaction with students, and just, you know, seeing someone happy after they've used some, some service that you've provided. You know, they come in and they say, oh, what do you have? It's like you're going to a store. 
and the store is like, hmm, still in, you know, 1980s time. And then all of a sudden, the, the management decides to renovate the store. And you come back and you go, wow. And you want to come back to that office, to that store. That's what we did. We wanted to make sure when someone came to our office, it was a friendly place, a welcoming place. You got your things done. And even if we couldn't help you, I always say, you know, it's the way we tell you, I'm so sorry, we couldn't help you. And you'll still leave happy. And you still want to come back to our office. You know, the office, we even have a mascot at the office. So students want to come there. You made it a welcoming environment. Mm -hmm. And that's all it's about. Senior services and education, mainly after school programs. Our community needs more after school programs, and there's some schools that, that, that the programs are there, and then there's others that really need some assistance. And then there's some senior centers that need some assistance. Um, and too often we go to the senior centers and they tell you they're, they're always nervous. Around the budget time, seniors are nervous. Oh my gosh, is my center going to be closed? Because you know, people th always threaten that senior centers are going to be closed. You know, we're going to cut the budget for seniors. Um, I don't think it should happen like that. They should never be afraid. We should always be willing to, to help our seniors. And um, so I want to work with the people who run the senior centers. And I want to work with the schools and so to encourage them to, for, you know, the after school programs. What I also want to do is get some more kids involved in the community coming to the office, to the district office, and working with us. We want kids to understand what it means to be involved in the community and how is it your involvement helps your community to move forward. I tell people all the time, you know, your community survives or it dies based on you. If you're not willing to work for your community, then you should not be part of the community. And if there's an issue, then you, sh you have no say in it because you're not, you're not part of assisting. You, know? you have to be willing to do the work for your community to grow. And when your community grows, then you can be the example for everyone else. Higher education, yeah, higher education. I know I was told, I, I don't think you can be in, you can work on that right away. I was like, yeah, but it's, it's, I really want to see that happen. You know, kids are coming and we talk about the issues in public school, we talk about what is public school, charter school, but then they come to higher ed and there are the issues, they're not really well prepared for higher ed. What is it that we need to do to ensure that kids coming into higher ed are prepared? the colleges need to reach out more and work with the public schools, the, the, the high schools, the junior high schools, work with them and get them to understand this is what the, the, the students need. So when they get to the college level, we don't have to have them taking remedial math, remedial English and all of these things. How is it that a kid is coming to school? They know to operate an iPad, they know everything about technology, but they can't write. Mm -hmm. You know, and those are the things. How do we, we're paying a lot of money for kids to attend college, but then you see along the way, they're attending for four years, their financial aid runs out, and then what? Mm -hmm. Loans and loans and loans. The, the intent is that the, the, the student coming from, college, from high school into college should be so prepared that they should be able to graduate within four years. Mm -hmm. You know, four or five years now. The national is like six years. You know, get them on that track and then the schools need to, the colleges and the high schools need to partner more. You know, there are the bridge programs, but how effective is, are the bridge programs with the high school and the colleges? We have to evaluate those programs. If it's done correctly, you know, if it's, if it's done correctly, <laughs> you know, we have, we have, I tend to think of it, there's a group of kids that we're no longer going to be able to reach them because it's coming too late for them. So maybe they have to look at a different way of, of getting a higher education or, or career. Um, Common Core, this is the whole discussion. We, we have to really flesh it out first and before we say, yes, that's the answer. You know, it may not be the answer, but we have to do something. Any other policy areas? You know, there are many of them. I walked into Albany one day and I had this entire list, and it was like, no, no, no. Immigration, mm -hmm. you know, I'm an immigrant. I was born in Guyana, South America. So, immigration issues is very important to me. I see daily people who, you know, 
they don't have the right status to get things done, you know, or they do have the right status, but they haven't done everything that's in lockstep the way they should so that they can get to a higher level and no one is there to assist them. You know, people tend to, to, to abuse immigrants sometimes. Um, so those are that immigrant issues I want to really look at. So it's, it's education, it's the seniors, it's the immigrant issues. And then I need to also look at the infrastructure of the community. You know, we have a community where, when, for example, when Hurricane Sandy hit, the community was lost because people didn't see the needs of the community and no one no one was really interested. I shouldn't say no one was interested. I should say on, on certain levels, people were not interested in that district. And so people had to fight harder for you to get services for the district. And the elected officials at the time, they, they, they did. They really fought to get the other um, elected officials to understand the needs of the community. My thing is, we have to get the people in the district to understand that you have to be part of the process. You have to be vocal. If numbers count, we know that. So when, when outsiders are seeing you as complacent, you're not going to have any assistance. So when, when you know, so we're working on getting people to understand what is it, what is their role in the community, so that the community can can receive services. And so, God forbid we have another storm like Sandy, we don't have to go through what we went through and what we're still going through in the aftermath of Sandy. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just all, it all takes working with people, bringing everybody together, you know, having them understand everyone's role, whether it's the elected officials, whether it's the clergy, whether it's the, the, the teachers in the school, whether it's the community as, at large. What is your role? How do we move forward? How do we make ourselves a better community?